guys and welcome back to another tutorial for the list variable list system that I created. So we're going to take a look at the removing part of the script this time around. Uh, now I have it set up again with another example of how you can basically change the uh, way it's configured compared to being just used by the GUI. So Basically, last episode or last the, in the last part, what we did was we basically just have a simple right-click function that will add the item to the list, and we can also do that through the GUI if we wanted to. We could uh, put the name in manually and then press uh, the add button, and then it would be, it would be added to the list. Now, I've changed the code just a little bit so we can. It detects if the player is sneaking and if the player is not sneaking based on either them right clicking on the actual block or not. So now that we have the honeycomb block we can actually remove it by sh uh, shifting and then clicking and then it should be gone now. So basically that allows us to remove certain items from the list. Uh, we could also do that through the procedure of going uh, grass and then adding it and then we could also go and remove it by going grass and then remove so it does the exact same function as that. So let's go into Emperor and I'll show you the basics of the script and how to customize it, customize it for your own um, variables or whatever you need it for. Alright, so the first thing that we've actually done is gone into our player right clicks on block with item uh, script and then what we've basically gone and done is when they're right clicking on a block that is not error, then I've basically just added the script for the custom example to basically use this as a trigger for uh, the script that we basically run the um, GUI script from, but I've tweaked it a little bit for it to basically support right clicking on and I'll cover that in just a little bit, but that's an important thing to note. So let's go into the script for the actual GUI for removing and then I'll cover how this basically works. It's broken up into a couple different sections. Now the main section for actually removing the items are from down here. All this from up here to here is all to test for the actual item itself for the entry. So basically what this does from here to here is it will try to find the exact value that the variable is being compared with. And if it can find it, then what it will do is it will make sure to use that particular section between the commas to replace it with error or no string in that case, which is which this section down here does. It basically gets the, uh, the position for the values that we got from up here and we know where the commas are now. So what it does is it basically goes and it replaces the value that we have for our list item and we're going to replace it with error. So because we know where the commas are, it makes it a lot easier to work with. So I'll try to break it down in further, and this is probably the most complicated part to actually explain, so I'll just start with that. So the first thing that we're doing is we're running it on the server side only and this basically allows us to um, only ensure that it runs on the server side and not the client. This can, it doesn't really need to be run on the client right now so it doesn't need to uh, be actually run on it for one thing. After that what we're doing is we're, we have a couple different local variables. We have the um, mcreator com comma counter and m creator comma position now both of these are set to zero and then what we're doing is we're basically testing here for our first comma position and 
how this basically works is we're running it on a repeater for the length of the actual um, variable itself. So our variable holds all the different values, like all the different entries that we have, right? So we're testing how long that is for how many times we need to repeat this procedure with. And then what we're doing then is we're basically going to get the position. So um, the local variable comma position plus one, if it's equal to or less than the length of the position. This basically allows us to catch anything that goes over the length of the actual um, substring value. So if it goes over a certain value of the substring, it can crash the game. So this basically causes or basically catches the position so it doesn't do that. Uh, it's a very important part to actually have a catch like this or it will basically crash the game. So if it is within that range of the length of the actual um, actual uh, substring text range, then what we're going to do is we're going to get the local, local variable. We're going to then test from position and then our position. So our position is zero by default. And then we're going to get the position plus one. So uh, comma position plus one. And we're going to be testing for a comma. And if it is a comma, then what we're going to do is we're going to set the M creator counter plus one. And then we're going to set the um, M creator position and M creator position plus one. So this basically increases the position by one. This in increases the, the counter of how many commas we find with one. So this basically just tests for the amount of commas that we have, where this is going to check for the word down here. All right, so for the next thing that we're actually doing is we're going to run the this main repeater, uh, the amount of times we have found commas minus one. So it's important to subtract that um, one or it might go over the amount that we need to. So the first thing that we're doing is we're going to run a, another repeater. This time we're going to get the length of the variable. And then what we're going to do is we're going to get the first position, which is basically should be set to zero by default, which is going to be equal to or less than our number. Again, remember this is the catch for the substring text, so it doesn't go over. Now, what we're doing here in this particular procedure for the repeater is we're going to be doing a very similar method like this, but it's going to be setting our first position for our replace script. So the first position and second position down here it, or a comma position basically allows us to get the positions between where our string that we have for a value and we're going to be testing for what um, those two commas if between those two commas there is a word that is the exact same as what we want to replace or remove in our case that we're doing here. So Again, uh, substring, we're just testing for the comma, and then what we're going to do is if it finds the comma, then what we're going to do is we're going to set our first position, and then we're going to set that plus one. So it's after the comma's start point. So because we're actually testing between the beginning of the comma and after the comma, we need to basically go after the comma to make sure that it, the comma isn't included in the test itself. So that's where this plus one comes in. After which we're just breaking out of the loop. And if it, this doesn't actually find a comma, then what we're going to do is we're going to just set the comma position plus one. And it's going to continue um, counting up until we can find a proper comma position for that. Uh, this is the first comma position as well. So it basically keeps increasing this number each time this runs. All right, so after which we have our 
variable here, which we have our M creator second comma position. Now we're going to set our first comma position to the second comma position. And what this will do is it will allow us to get that one position right before the comma, or pardon me, after the comma. And then what we're going to do is we're going to test for a second comma after that point. So in our case, we're testing for the length again, very similar to this whole method up here. Uh, the only difference is we're not increasing the position for the second comma. So before we had to set the position ahead of the comma, but uh, because this is the second uh, comma position that we don't actually have to go over the comma because it's already in front of the comma. So we're just, we don't need to, if we were to put it in front of the comma again, then it would basically test for the comma as well. So we don't need to do that this time. We just need to break out of the loop. And again, this is the test to make sure it doesn't go over the substring. We're testing for the comma and we're going to be testing for the second position as normal. Um, after which, if it doesn't find the condition for the comma, then what it's going to do is it's going to just increase the number for the second comma position and try to find that there. All right, so if that's if that does happen, then what we're going to do is we find two commas. One's our first comma for our first position, the second comma, and everything between those two commas uh, without the commas themselves is going to be tested for in this section here. So in our case, what we're doing is we're do doing a double test to make sure that both of these um, positions are not over the substring text. So that's important. We're testing for an and, and then we're getting the same thing. This is basically the exact same thing as this part right here, just testing for the both the first position and the second position. After which we're going to be testing for our global variable that has our value. If the first position and second position is equal to, and then our text field name, which is our list. And then what we're going to do is if it finds that it's going to break out of this loop. So this loop is the main repeater here. And if it doesn't find it, then what we're going to do is we're going to set our M creator first position to our local second position for our comma position. And that will move, that will basically shift over the selection from the first comma to the second comma and the second comma will be tested for after that. So basically it basically runs this script over again after it does not uh, break out of the loop. <laughs> So that's basically that part and then getting on to this part down here we're basically testing to make sure that the length of the item very similar to this test right here we're basically making sure that both positions aren't outside of the substring text area so it doesn't crash the game and then what we're going to do is we're going to get the substring text with a position of the comma if it actually finds the same word and then what we're going to do is we're going to get the list just to make sure that it is the same word again and to make sure that it can properly be removed. And then what we're going to do is we're going to get that local variable. We're going to replace it with the substring text that we basically got. So the same thing that we got right here. And the only difference is we're going to go with position plus one. Now this will include the last comma of the section that we're basically testing for. So this is important or you're going to have a whole bunch of commas piling up at the end. So basically what we're doing is we're just taking the beginning of the word that we're basically testing for and then we're going all the way to the last comma of that particular thing and we're going to delete that. So again, we're replacing it with air and then we're going to set the part that we're replacing is our global variable. All right, so now that we got an understanding of how that all works, Let's go into the example itself and I'll show you what you basically need to replace. So if we go into examples and then we go and click on the example remove list entry script, we have the exact same example that we had that we just covered. The only difference is we're testing for two things right here. Now, before we were testing for the 
um, actual GUI text field name. Now, I've kept it the same with the right click. I'm getting the display name of the item in the main hand. And the only difference now is we're basically testing if the player is actually sneaking. So we can basically sneak to basically remove the item and not sneak to test for it or, or add the item. So again, you just basically replace these two parts right here with whatever string text you want to basically add or remove from the section and it will be able to test for that. And that's as simple as it is. It's actually really straightforward. You don't need to touch too much of this stuff. All of it will be pretty much imported. The only thing that you'll probably have to update is your global variable and all the things that are basically wiped by default or uh, green text right here are going to be needing to be replaced with whatever, wherever you're storing a variable with. But other than that, it will work completely fine when you import it. Outside of that, that's all the time that I have for today. Now we will cover the replace. I think we covered the add one. Uh, we can do the check one next uh, next uh, tutorial and then we'll basically be able to check for certain things and it's pretty much the same script. It's just tweaked a little bit to print out something instead. So we'll do that one next. Um, probably next week. So if you're new to my channel, again, tune in for that. Don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.